So real quick, I'm jumping back as I compile the video. And this is how I'm going to update the back of my ID. So this better helps to aid law enforcement during any interactions. So they got the mailing address. And then when it comes to if we had to do legal service, uh, service process, something like that, like where would we be able to find you? So that's where I would disclose the registration, the business registration with the Secretary of State for that abandoned lot there. Which I haven't wrote down in my notebook, but that's like my next step I need to do actually right now. Oh my gosh, so just got back over here. Went to Harbor Freight along with some other places after donating plasma. And it looked like this cutoff wheel would probably do the job. But, you know, the petty theft around Grand Junction, this being specifically Orchard Mesa. So I just got the radiator replaced. Need to get something to protect it a little bit more, but had to go pick up, pick up food, so left the tire and the radiator here. Radiator's gone. So that's one less thing I gotta recycle. Apparently somebody else needed it more than I did. And what I'm looking at on spare tire where is it at now oh, there it is the sidewall the whole specific is nylon so it doesn't have any steel cords so real easy much easier to recycle flown it back to japan well needs a tube preserve a lot better in river water instead of breaking down in the sun. Anyway, I'll pop the hood here real quick and show you what I would have done. So basically, I would have just took that Dremel went along the edges, cut off the teeth. Least amount of waste. And still could throw it into the aluminum and that should take both tops and bottoms off. Way I was taught at Trade Center Auto Salvage is they were just quick and sloppy about it and they would just cut across here, pull the cores out. Well, you lose the majority of aluminum doing that. So hopefully it's profitable to the one that stole it. I don't waste my time on reporting petty theft. It's another reason why I didn't build the trailer over here in the vacant commercial lots. Got absolutely no security camera coverage, so. But that's what the smartphone is. Definitely a great alternative to security camera. So no to the pendojo I stole the radiator. See it says Okay, it's clearly inside on the ground. It's not on the sidewalk, it's not in the street. You can't touch the property even though it's abandoned property lot. 
The property on it's totally different. It's not covered by the same laws. And this statue, like many of them in here, specifically pertain to on a highway for Department of Transportation. They need to be a little bit more specific about it. Yeah, you genius, right? How am I supposed to get the tire now? Down the river. It's all I needed. Just gotta go to Japan and get recycled. No, and they're still learning. They don't quite grasp the whole understanding. On Local 10, more than four decades ago, an estimated one million tires were dumped into the ocean here in South Florida to create an artificial reef. But the project was an environmental disaster and the cleanup is still going on. So why is... Now look at that. You see black like flowing off the tires as if it's degrading. Oil and water doesn't mix. To taking so long and what progress is being made. Our Janine Stanwood takes us 70 feet under. You'd never know it from the bustling coastline of Fort Lauderdale. But 70 feet beneath the ocean's surface are the remains of a bad idea from decades. So that's a good idea. Copper, it'll rust. We probably have to use stainless steel rivets. Three of them would be sufficient to keep them together. Decades ago, tires, hundreds of thousands of them, intended to form an artificial reef, instead leaving behind a watery wasteland. We go offshore with Industrial Divers Corporation of Fort Lauderdale. Charged with the dangerous and dirty job of plucking those tires from the ocean. Yeah, so now without a tube, they have to use heavier equipment to drag the floor rather than being able to use a net to pick them up from semi-floating. Floor, showing us why they say this work is taking so long. But this is the first that I know of, the first, you know, full-time, multi-year uh, effort to clean up the reef. How tough is it? It's not easy. Okay, I'm ready. Go. The team goes down to give us a closer look at their two-step process. Crews rig the tire underwater, then slowly hoist them up and onto the barge. So what took years to do has taken decades to undo. On a good week, 5,000 tires could be recovered. When bundles of tires were first dumped about a mile offshore in the 1970s, it was supposed to be a smart way to dispose of used tires and create a reef to attract fish. But then when the, the clips rusted through and the straps came loose, all the tires just kind of fell apart. And this is why the tires broke up. So yeah, this is one of the steel. original straps from oh, yeah, 40 is. years ago. Yeah. Loose tires damaged coral, and it's estimated only 10% of the tires ever became marine habitat. Florida officials, realizing this was a colossal failure, enlisted the help of the military in 2007. They removed about 72,000 tires, uh, but then it got to the point where they just have so many operations around the world. 5,000 tires Yeah, so same thing. When bundle... Since it's going to the heated conflict zone, preferably not the slow route. California straight over. 1970, they got dropped and they're still in good condition. That doesn't happen sitting on land and exposed to the sunlight. And the knuckles here in Mesa County are shredding them and making playground, hot playgrounds for kids. No, they need to be recycled properly. You can read, right? A 
that's a very old slang. You want to see the cloud so it's enough to show that the weather pattern will push it out the production exhaust out to sea to be able to well ventilate before coming up a top toxic atmosphere issue over mainland My internet's connection's pretty slow. Yeah, so it's going in the right direction. In Tokyo area would be the best. Anywhere along that shoreline going north. Okay, so let me try to put this in context for county commissioners. So, benefits being recycled is construction material, not landscaping mulch, bag council, floor mats, crafts, yeah, that all makes sense. So, prohibiting certain kind of recycling, reuse of products, that would be something a county legislator could put together to better direct industrial uh, activity not issue fines for not dumping it at uh, the county waste facility which is actually being stupid with the recycled product it needs to be reused properly going back into what it was used for not repurposing it in a dangerous manner So it's one thing to ride a county law, it's another thing to make sure to follow up. Make sure the recycling process is done properly. Once you got that established and those connections, then you don't have to worry about it. It may be a lifetime contract you never have to worry about again. But anyway, for now, we're still recovering from the injuries of the county's corruption. So, I don't have the money to go take it to the landfill. I've heard it went from 2 to $5. So, BLM's not that far. Maybe the feds will do a better job. Well, I know. Oh, I would have to assume when somebody stole it for the recycling money, of aluminum uh, two see 12 I mean 512 today two and a half months without the health department um, being functional enough to actually catch up for food assistance people are gonna start doing really stupid stuff Guys, better get it figured out. Uh, probably on a local level, federal local level. Be more for uh, civil engineers, National Guard, to figure out how to properly and safely get them down the river to California so they can get them recycled properly at the right facilities. Plus, they don't have to be watched because, you can go figure, you know, they're not logs, so crap can be 
drilled stuff, you know. So it's best for the feds to watch the truck line. In this case, a trout line. I guess on, I don't know what the cutoff would be, uh, Avon, where it's the slope begins and continues going down from the Continental Divide in Colorado, where, where it will literally roll downhill, come back downhill. If they don't have tubes in them, they're going to settle, which, oh, excuse me, that's not a bad thing. They're just going to be preserved longer, the last thing to be recycled, more or less. Um, and that'll give some cushioning to a pre-warner to bottom out for rafters when it's not uh, high rapids. So that gives a pretty good sized re regional effort to for the state to think about how to be more economically productive, get the prices down, get the product returned. I must mess up a few homeboys in their coyote games. Yeah, I'd like to see some of you coyotes try to cross over hot tar. Have fun.